Hey guys, Nick here, and today we will be seeing who Shane shoots and what ramifications will happen with this particular scene. This is part 20 to What If Sophia Joined Negan. Shane takes the shot. Before anyone can see it, BANG! The shot goes off from his shotgun, and Negan is the victim. After hearing Sophia call Negan dad, Shane made up his mind and knew there was only one thing to do. Kill Negan? Maybe get the old Sophia back. Make her see what she did. Before anyone can notice what's going on, Negan clutches his throat, blood spewing out of it, and a giant hole straight through it. Negan falls to the ground. And with his dying breath, he tells Sophia that he loves her and that she's become a fine addition to the Saviors and dies. Sophia cries out, screaming in a manner of which we never would have heard from Sophia, original story or in this story. And she is just full of sadness or rage, hatred. This isn't the exact manner of attitude Shane would have wanted from Sophia, especially the rage part. But before he can even understand what's going on, and before anybody can think of anything, this all happens, mind you, within the matter of, like, a minute. Not even, like, Two, three, four minutes. This happens so fast, you couldn't tell what's happening clearly. Sophia grabs her machete and rushes towards Shane super quickly and stabs it straight through Shane's heart. And considering it's a friggin' machete through the heart, yeah, Shane's dead here, unfortunately making the ultimate sacrifice. Sophia says, Shane brought this upon himself. She already said no, and if he had left well enough alone, he might not have died. Or at least, if he did, by the hands of Negan, it would have been longer, one, before it happened, and number two, in a much different way. But... He just had to do this. He did the wrong thing. And Sophia says, now, now that Negan's dead, and now that he's dying, he's going to spend his last dying moments thinking about what he's done, and she'll still put him to use. He's still got a use in this world, but now it'll be serving the saviors as a dead man. And with that, Jesus, who's still at the sanctuary, mind you, sitting at the sidelines because Shane told him to, runs off before anybody can do anything because they're too preoccupied with the fact that not only did this random guy Shane kill their leader, but now Sophia killed that guy. It's a bunch happening at once, and... Yeah, nobody's going to notice Jesus. No one will care to. He runs off to Alexandria because Shane would have said something about it and goes to warn them. But the battle is a mix of one and not one. On one hand, Shane has made the ultimate sacrifice to kill Negan and now the saviors are pretty much leaderless. But if you guys think that this is where the story ends, well, not really. We've still got a good bit of the story left to tell. And you guys will see right now. Now, as Sophia said, Shane is still going to be put to use, serving the saviors as a dead man. Instead of Simon being chained up to the walls... Like in the original story, we're going to see Shane chained up to the walls. Because Simon and Michonne were already taken care of long before this point. So, yeah. 
Shane gets Simon's sort of twist there, but this would still be season six territory, so it'd be a lot earlier. And another nice little twist is that we actually get to see Negan as a walker, because remember, Negan's got his own spinoff, so obviously we're not going to get that anytime soon. Hopefully. Anyways, we actually get to see Negan as a walker. Not only was Negan spared to remind the saviors of their former leader, but he is also given his own place, but not at the walls. He is taken back to his own bedroom and chained to the walls of the room. Why? To basically put him in the place where he should be, a rightful place for their formal leader, and for Sophia to remember him. Because Sophia, it's kind of her room too after a certain point. Now, it's also for Sophia to remember her pretty much former dad. Because Negan, he really was a better dad as I've stated before, than Ed ever was. So for him to die so callously like this, it really just has broken Sophia. She's not going to take this sitting down, but I'll get to more of that in a moment. She also takes Negan's bat Lucille as an mem extra memento to remember him by and to signify that the leadership of saviors just because Negan's dead has not gone away. But like I said, I'll get to that right here in a moment. But yeah, I don't know if she would take the vest, but the bat, I feel she would most definitely take. Now, Gavin brings up a very interesting point after all this is said and done. It would take some time for all this to get arranged. But Gavin brings up a good point. Without Negan, who's going to lead them? They're down a good many of soldiers. Simon, Michonne, now Negan. Who's going to lead them? They're in a pickle. This is bad. But Sophia says, as the rightful daughter of Negan, she will take up the leadership of the saviors and steer a path to get revenge on Rick and his people. At first, tiny little part of her maybe wanted them to join still get her family back in some shape or form, but this, nope, she is going to slaughter them all for what they did to her father. And any love or compassion she still had for her mom and Rick and them, it's gone. This is war. Meanwhile, at the gates of Alexandria, something peculiar takes the notice of Rick and his people after they've waited forever for Shane to maybe come back. All of a sudden, this tension is broken by an unfamiliar sound. Heavy, repetitive pounding on the Alexandria gates. And it almost sounds like a SWAT team banging on the gates. This is furious knocking. It's like... <laughs> like that. Except way louder and effective. Rick, accompanied by Daryl this time, enter the gates... And see, it's Jesus. But they don't know this because Shane met Jesus on the road. So Jesus is unknown to them. So this would be their first time meeting. This time it's at Alexandria and not in the middle of nowhere. Jesus basically says that he'd encountered Shane on the road and proceeds to spill the beans but about what happened, him taking Shane to the sanctuary, and the whole thing about Sophia not wanting to come back and calling Negan her dad. And after that, Shane taking the initiative to kill Negan, but this didn't turn out the way he wanted and ultimately led to Sophia killing Shane and says that he really didn't want to tell Rick's group about this or anything, but... There was honestly no other way to really say it. And says that there might be a way to get Sophia back, but it's a gamble. They could go to his community, the hilltop. But how Sophia is, 
This is going to mean war either way. Rick says that even though he doesn't want to believe all this, there really isn't a choice in the matter. And although he is very upset about Shane's death, since this is his first real loss, and it's way later in the story, there's no time to mourn. They have to get Sophia back. Because even though she killed Shane, there still has to be a way. They have not risked so much for her to not get her back. They have to try. And Rick tells all of his people about what's happened and says that he basically reiterates that even though Sophia's done what she's done and everything else, they have to try and get her back. And this might mean more, but they have to win. It's a gamble, but they have to try. Now, Carol, and especially Daryl, are proud of Rick in this moment because Rick's not giving up. Even though Shane's bitten the dust, even though Negan's down and Sophia seeks vengeance on Rick and his people, Rick's not giving up. And this really would inspire everyone else that even though Sophia's definitely, definitely a part of the saviors at this point in time, that the battle's not over yet, and that they will try their absolute best to get her back on the winning team. Now, the group goes to Hilltop like the original, but with way more people. And the whole Ethan thing, stabbing Gregory, the whole thing is not going to happen. Why? Because Rick's group... In the Savior's eyes, Negan's gone, and Simon's gone, so the whole center focus that the Saviors are focused on is Rick's group. As a matter of fact, all the other communities are just sidelined. They don't matter at this point in the story. They are not the center focus, so they just go to Hilltop to get extra support, pretty much, and formulate a plan. Now, the whole group that is going to confront the saviors at the sanctuary consists of Merle, Carl, Beth, Dwight, Aaron, Sherry, Nicholas, Carol, Abraham, Tyrese, Martinez, Gabriel, Mika, Andrea, Big Tiny, Glenn, Rick, Tara, Maggie, Sasha, Daryl, Enid, and Lori. That's a handful, ain't it? But, with all this said... This is the entire group that is going to head to the sanctuary for all-out war against the saviors in a last-ditch effort to get Sophia back for good. Also, we get a little twist with two extra characters coming along for the ride. Owen is coming along too, a fully redeemed good guy, because we saw his redemption a little bit before he was killed by Carol, unfortunately. And he's also taught the stick by Morgan, because if you think about it, this would fit Owen perfectly, because Morgan's really the one who r- redeemed him. If it weren't for him, he wouldn't have saved Denise or anything in the original. So you gotta thank him for that little tidbit. And Morgan goes along too, because it would be a way to make up for those he couldn't save. Dwayne and his wife, you know. I think it'd be a nice little twist there. Now, with all this said, how will the encounter with the Saviors go? Will they encounter them on the road like before, and the war won't even happen? Or if it does, how will the war go, now that Negan's out of the picture? Will Sophia finally see sense in the end, and spare Rick and everybody, including her own mom? Or is any part of rationale gone with Sophia? And this means utter and complete war to the absolute end. And that's where we leave things for the moment. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. The next episode, I'm going to warn you, is not going to be that much like war packed as you might think. But it will definitely be something to witness. I'll at least leave you guys with that little bit of information. But with Negan out of the picture and Sophia being the new Negan, hope you guys like that little twist. Hope you guys are enjoying the series as a whole. And 
I will see you guys in the next video.